Hi everyone, welcome back and happy new year to you. It's 2019. This is my first video of the new year. Uh, I closed the year last year um, with a video about um, defrosting the car and it surprised me how many people were interested in that. So I think to start the new year, I need to close that subject off and complete the other half of that. And basically the other half is preconditioning because what I did in my first video was basically walk out to a cold car, start it, and defrost it and see how long it takes. So doing it the manual method. But with EVs, um, especially EVs that have an app interface, it's most common, I think, to, or it's at least most talked about, to precondition the car, to heat the car in advance of when you want to leave. So you set the time when you want the car to heat or to leave, and the car's nice and warm and defrosted by the time you actually go to it. So it's very convenient, very easy. And for those cars that have an app, it's really convenient and a lovely feature, isn't it, that you can basically do it while having breakfast over a cup of coffee in the morning. You can set the parameters and you can defrost your car. If, of course, the web servers uh, work and if, of course, your car has the 3G connectivity and you've got a signal. With the Kona Electric, we don't have that. We don't have an app. We don't have 3G connectivity. There is no interface to do it. So we're basically stuck with doing it manually or doing it on a timer. And that's how preconditioning works with the Kona Electric. It's on a timer only. You plug the car in so that the energy used to precondition the car comes from your charger, not from the main car battery. So you shouldn't be losing any miles in range or gaining them either, unless you're specifically asking the car to charge. Now in this test, I'm going to basically turn off the charging capability. I don't want the car to charge. And the reason for that, I want to measure the amount of electricity that is used to do the preconditioning. Before I do the test, what appears to me to be the difference is that if you go to the car and it's cold outside and not plugged in and you just turn the heater on, then you're using the battery's energy and you're reducing the range of the car. If you precondition it, you have it plugged in, you're not reducing the range of the car, you're using electricity from the grid. That seems to be the biggest difference. So, off we go, let's go and do it and demonstrate it. The first thing I've done is to plug it in. And we've got a green light, so it's charging. Okay, the car says we're at 70% uh, state of charge and it's charging at 6.9 kilowatts. So the first thing I wanna do is turn the charger off. So to do that, let's go over to the charger. AC charger, 70%. There we go. So now it's stopped charging because it's at the state of charge that we're actually asking for, so it doesn't need to charge anymore. Next, we're going to set the preconditioning. So what do we need to do? We need to set the target temperature. So we'll select target temperature, and it's at 22 degrees. Over here on setup, 21 degrees will probably be enough. We don't need such a high temperature with preconditioning because it's going to take longer to do the preconditioning. So we don't mind that it's going to be a slower warm-up process. There'd be no need to heat the car to 25, 26 degrees for that prolonged period because, yes, it would defrost the car, but it'd also be too hot when I got into the car to go. So for me, uh, I think preconditioning, you should be setting to a more more normal temperature that you'd want to drive away at. And basically it will still do the same preconditioning, it will defrost the car, but it'll do it over a more gradual period. I believe preconditioning comes on half an hour before you set your departure time. So here we are, temperature set. I don't want charging and I've already set the limit so it's not going to anyway. Next departure. Next departure, um, set that. We'll set it to 9.20 nine or actually nine nine o'clock so i'll set it for nine o'clock in the morning all the different days are set so basically we're good to go so i can come out and check the car at 8 30 and see whether the car actually starts preconditioning and charging and that's my plan so there we go that's the schedule set so the schedule set i've selected a target temperature Charging is not selected and charge limit is set to below where the car is already charged to in its state of charge and therefore it should not charge anymore. Why am I doing that? I'm doing that just so that I can tell how much electricity is being used for the preconditioning, not for charging the car. In a normal circumstance, if you're already pre-charging the car ready to depart, why wouldn't you give it a little bit more charge as well? So you probably would be doing a bit of charging as well. 
So that's all done. And what we can see down here, we have it illuminated to say that preconditioning is set to come on on timer. And that's it. We're good to go. So let's have a quick check. The GOM says, oh, it just, <laughs> just went down. It was 190, so it was right on the edge. 190 miles, it now says 189. So that's perfect because I know it's right on the threshold of 189.9 or 190 just about. So we'll remember that. And when we come back, we'll see whether that's changed. So on the front, while the car is set for preconditioning but not charging, you can see there is no illumination on the front. So there's nothing to tell you from outside that preconditioning is set. And luckily, I don't have to go outside to check the car to see whether preconditioning is working or not. I've got a smart meter here in the kitchen. I can see how much electricity the house is using. So with nothing else switched on, we're using 115, 124 watts there, but not a lot else. Oh, there we go. 3.691 kilowatts. That's the car coming on with preconditioning. This isn't quite what I was expecting to see. I was expecting to see a high amount of kilowatts to start with being used to heat the car and then it gradually reduce. Instead, what we're seeing is it fluctuate. It's starting at half a kilowatt, one kilowatt, and then jumping to three, four, five, but then jumping back down again. It's not very steady at the moment. So uh, best pop out to the car and see what's happening there. Well, firstly, we can hear that the heat is on. Secondly, we can see that uh, the car has a flashing charge light. So is the car charging or isn't it? We've got this orange ring here, which isn't the same as when it's charging. When it's actually charging, it's green. So not quite sure yet whether it is charging or whether it isn't. This makes it look like it is. This makes it look like it isn't. But you can hear the fans definitely on, that something's working. Presumably that's part of the heat pump. So I'm not going to open the door and disturb the car, but what we can see from inside, we have a flashing light of the preconditioning on the climate controls. We have heat on and re air recirculation is on. And on the dash display, it doesn't appear to be charging. So it is just the heater that's on. It is definitely not charging. And of course, because the high voltage battery is in use, We've got the yellow light on as well. So that's the warning signal, isn't it, for engineers, mechanics, and for anyone generally to know that the car is live and the high voltage battery, battery is working. For customers, I'm not sure why they really need to tell us that because it is insulated, it's safe, we don't need to really know. But for mechanics, when they're working on the car, that's where I believe this light is particularly of use. So we're eight or nine minutes into the preconditioning time now, and it's still pulling 2.2, 2.3 kilowatts which is quite a lot um, for this length of time, considering it's not as cold as it was on the day that uh, I tested it and we did it only for three minutes to defrost the car. It's taken quite a long time overall, but we can see that the uh, kilowatts being used are coming down and therefore presumably the car is gradually getting to temperature, but it's taking quite a while and using quite a lot of electricity compared to just the three minutes that I defrosted the car manually. Well, while we're waiting for the preconditioner to complete, there's something that uh, has come to my mind that I thought I would share, and that's, although it's popular for preconditioning to be done automatically, is it the sensible thing to do? Is it the right thing to do? When I initially told people online that I was not going economy seven, and I was doing that for the reason of wanting to charge whenever I want to, not just overnight, there was almost an outcry saying, you know, what on earth are you doing? You can't charge the car while it's peak times. But isn't that what's happening with preconditioning. Preconditioning is likely to be done for when you want to leave, at peak times, at rush hour. So for many people, preconditioning the car would happen inside peak hours. So why would you use the grid to power the car? And as we've seen, two kilowatts, five kilowatts, however much it's drawing at the time to do it, why would you use the grid, not the car, at peak times? So there's another issue here to discuss, isn't there, that if you defrost the car manually, one, it's quick from what we saw, but two, you're using the car's battery and not the grid. If you're preconditioning in the Kona, you're using energy from the grid. And if you're already plugged in and you're already preconditioning the car, you're probably charging as well. So that's encouraging you to charge at around a peak time. So although it seems really popular for people to precondition the car as it's a really, is it a gimmicky feature, a good feature, a convenient feature, for whatever reason, it's likely that you're going to be doing that at peak hours, potentially. So 
I don't know, is that a conflict of interest that uh, although many people think we should be charging and not using extra resources at peak times to help the national grid and to help not have these spikes that cause us to use dirty fuel power stations, etc., then perhaps preconditioning the car and charging the car as part of that process just before you're going to leave at peak hours, perhaps it's not the right thing to do. Do you care? Does it matter? Is that what you do? I don't know. What's your thoughts? Let me know in some comments below. Anyway, uh, I'm off to make a cup of coffee while we're still waiting. So what we're going to do next is wait. We're going to wait till nine o'clock, the departure time, see how much electricity has been used and see what happens to the car when it reaches departure time. Does it turn off or does it continue? OK, so we're nearly 20 minutes into the preconditioning phase now and it's still drawing 1.3, 1.4 kilowatts. OK, so it's nine o'clock. Let's see what's happening. So no yellow light on the front. No amber light saying it's uh, preconditioning and no charging, so it's stopped. And inside the car, uh, no preconditioning on, no heaters on. It is lovely and warm in here. It does feel about 21 degrees or so. So that's it. Job done. Uh, basically, when the car reached departure time, it goes off. Let's have a look and see what the uh, range says. And it still says 70%. Range, turn the heater off, 190 miles. So when we started, it crossed over from 190 to 189, so it was right on the borderline. So it looks like it's had a minuscule amount of energy go in to keep it at 70% state of charge. So there you go, there's the differences. If you go out to a cold car and you turn it on and warm the car up and defrost it manually it takes around three minutes if you precondition the car and set a departure time and stick to that departure time then it takes 30 minutes how much electricity did it use 0.91 of a kilowatt hour well that's quite a lot isn't it um, if you presume that in the winter you're going to make 3.5 to 4 miles per kilowatt hour which is quite reasonable I think um, what we're talking then is three to four miles whereas doing it manually I saw the GOM drop by one mile so it's yeah it's considerably more energy being used even though I'm only heating the car to 21 22 degrees it definitely appears that it's less efficient and using a lot more energy to precondition the car so the choice is yours on how you want to do it whether you want to have it just so that you walk out to the car and get into a warm car but I must confess even though I'm sat in here in a warm car now the seat isn't warm and the mirrors wouldn't have been defrosted. So if you've got to do that anyway and put the heat seaters on when you get in the car and uh, demist the mirrors and rear windscreen, then you've got to do part of what you do manually anyway. It's seriously making me think of not bothering preconditioning the car anyway. Um, I, I think I would just pop out to the car and turn the heater on manually and wait those couple of minutes because the heated steering wheel and the heated seats would come on instantaneously uh, so you'd get pretty warm pretty quick so uh, I'm almost wondering what the benefit of the preconditioning is um, other than um, a bit of a gimmick I suppose uh, may maybe that's just me and my circumstances maybe other people would uh, think that it's worth a lot more to precondition it but for that to be for the 30 minutes and to use more energy and to draw that from the grid as well at peak times potentially I'm not so convinced that's the best answer for uh, preconditioning the car. Uh, I think I would prefer the app interface to probably be able to turn the heat seaters on and the heated rear mirrors on just before I go out. That's what I would like. I would like an app interface, not a timed preconditioning interface, so that uh, when I'm about to leave the house just a few minutes before, then I can turn the heaters on, then I can turn the wing mirrors, uh, heated, the heated wing mirrors on and the heated rear screen, the heated seats as well. I'd like to be able to turn all those things on so it's ready for me. But not 30 minutes beforehand, just three or four minutes beforehand so the car's ready for me and de-iced at the time. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on the differences? The differences on basically doing it manually is faster, doing it preconditioning wise means you don't have to go outside at all other than plug the car in. And should you be doing it? Should you be doing it at the times you leave for work? Does it affect you? What are your thoughts? 
let me know. Thanks for watching everyone. Thanks for sharing the videos and subscribing of course. I can't believe we're up to 3,000 subscribers and I've been doing this a lot less than a year. So um, it's gone from strength to strength hasn't it? You're obviously enjoying these videos. Take care and uh, until the next one, see you again soon. Bye bye.